Hi everyone, if you're watching this on my public channel, then basically MyHeritage has failed me. Primarily I'm making this as a MyHeritage support video, because the images associated with uh, sources and citations, like census, birth, marriage, death, etc., they're not downloaded via the Family Tree Builder app that MyHeritage provide. Instead, all I get is individual photographs. So those valuable birth, death and marriage certificates that I'm paying so much for access to are basically lost once my subscription dies. And I say again, we pay a lot for these subscriptions. Let me get into the demo. Firstly, a few fundamentals. I have a complete plan with my heritage. The complete plan is a bundle that includes both the Premium Plus and data subscriptions, and my heritage describe it as the ultimate option. And yes, it is the ultimate when it comes to price. As you can see here, it's $299 for one year. For comparison on Ancestry, documentary evidence in the form of certificates and documents like census certificates and newspaper entries get saved as source citation attachments and can be downloaded to one's local computer. I'll possibly show how to do that in a future video. My heritage described the same, but that's not what's happening. It's important researchers know those differences before choosing a subscription package to any online service. Look at this thread on the Family Historian user group, where the poster describes the very same difficulty. Quote, when I import an MHJCOM including media links, the media links appear as broken because they refer to internet links. And a follow on quote, I know it is possible to use FTB, which is Family Tree Builder from MyHeritage, to generate a JEDCOM and local media folder. However, in my case, FTB does not export all media. That's exactly the problem I'm having. I've previously sent this link to MyHeritage support to help clarify the issue, but they appear to be a little slow accepting the problem. They repeatedly ask me for screenshots, and I'm thinking maybe it's a delaying tactic. If they don't understand this video and respond with corrective action, then the video will end up in the public domain as reference and to help my followers make an informed subscription choice. If you're not already subscribed to my channel and want to get notifications of honest genealogy related videos, then click the subscribe button below the video, followed by the bell. It appears the designed way to get those images you've paid for downloaded from MyHeritage is to use their very own program, which is called Family Tree Builder. And here it is. You click the sync button and everything online is synced to Family Tree Builder on your desktop. I'm going to focus on Carl Ilgina. And as you can see here, Carl has a lot of documentary evidence available. A lot of which I would like to collect to my local computer to support my research as source information in the future. If I click on Carl's profile, I can see a lot of images here for possible matches. Look at the thumbnails. They are all newspaper or yearbook type images, mostly mixtures of text and images, and all those with a tick mark I have previously confirmed. If I move over, I can see some here with a question mark. Let me click one like this one with the text and photo. Now remember that thumbnail. This takes me to a web browser within the MyHeritage desktop app. So a little like the web search window within my family historian desktop software, where you can open and accept matches. Back to Family Tree Builder, and I have the option to confirm match, and the image appears in the lower half of the screen. I can click to enlarge the image and verify that the image does relate to my relative before confirming. Another thing that doesn't appear to work in my heritage is the download image. Top right here you will see various buttons, including one to print and one to download. Maybe that's the option I need. Well, not really. I click it and I'm presented with two further options, neither of which work, no matter how much I click. This works slightly differently in the web, but still does not download the image. How do I know that? Well, I use the excellent everything app from Void Tools. I have it set to picture here and I can see there have been no recent images added to my computer. I'll close that window and confirm the match. Here we can see another screen displaying the source citation and the associated image above in the same pane. One final step is to save to tree. I do that and I get a confirmation that the match was confirmed and saved to Carl Elgina. 
Looks good, except it's not. I try to click on the view profile option and nothing. Another problem. So I double click him on the index. I view Carl's profile again and here is the image. You will remember the thumbnail with the text and image combination and now it has a checkbox against it. I'm going to sync again just to make sure everything is aligned between web and desktop. Just like the person who posted on the Family Historian user group, I want to download my tree from MyHeritage and import it into my Family Historian project. How it appears to be designed is you click on the file followed by Export JEDCOM. Click the Save As, give the download a name and click Save. The next screen informs you the wizard will guide you through the process. Click Next. Here you can give the file a description. I don't want to do that. So click Next. Here on this screen you have various options. I want to include all people. I want any notes. I want sources and citations. I want save photo information. Click Next. Would I like to create a subfolder for the exported photos and this option is recommended. Click Yes. The file starts to download and I get a confirmation of success. Exported photos were successfully saved into the following folder. I want to open that folder so I click the option. Here we are in that folder and I want to look for the image thumbnail of the combined photo and text. It's not here. And neither are any of the other text based images we saw attached to car. In fact, none of the source documentation, including census, death records, and other source documentation is here. Bottom line is MyHeritage only downloads images attached as person image files and not source documentation images. These images, which look like documentary evidence, are attached as individual images and not source or citation media. Another problem I see here is a lot of duplication. In fact, most of the media files appear to be duplicated in some way with slightly different file names. This is completely different from Ancestry, who do download source citation media. MyHeritage is one of the most expensive subscription options, as I declared at the outset. I'm on the most expensive package they offer, and it's due to lapse in December due to these problems. I do hope it's a bug. I do hope I get an answer and something my heritage can resolve quickly. I certainly haven't received what I expected and paid for in my subscription and I'm only discovering this recently with year end coming. I know that Family Tree source citation documentary images can be downloaded from Ancestry to your own computer and I likely describe how to do that in a follow on video. Again, these subscriptions are expensive. Many senior researchers are on limited income during a cost of living crisis, so they need to choose any service carefully and get full value for money. I'm uploading this video privately to demonstrate the problem to my heritage. If you're now seeing it publicly on my channel, then unfortunately my heritage have failed to resolve the problem. Well, you're watching this video in public now, so the reply from my heritage wasn't what I'd hoped. It's not a bug. Another thing pointed out by Derek Heritage of the Family Historian Zoom group is that the images you actually download of people, they're very, very tiny. You might upload something which is 800 by 600 pixels, and when you get it down, it's a, it's a tiny little image. So you're not even getting downloads of what you originally upload. The only suggestion I can make is refer to one of my earlier videos and use either the drag and drop directly within Family Historian or the copy and paste again within Family Historian. That way you'll get the full image resolution and you'll also get those source images that you're looking for. You'll find the reply from MyHeritage in the support folder for this video. Getting to the support folder is easy. Click on the video description, scroll down and click on the link. You'll see the various folders with materials from previous videos. Download as you please. The next video will finish off the media related tools showing how to rename and also how to use keywords to quickly filter your media collection. Renaming these meaningless ancestry type file names is now possible within Family Tree Maker, Family Historian 
and apparently in Herodus 2024 that will also be possible. Sadly, it's still not possible in Roots Magic. I guess you've all enjoyed the free Remembrance Weekend access offered by the Big Three, and I've collected a lot more sort of media, not only pictures of individuals, but war records, newspaper clippings, etc., and I need to go off and get those all input into my file. You can see here if I filter and unclick media, here they all are. If I scroll down, you'll see the file names that we need to deal with in the next video. Even some duplication within these, look at these two. One has a crazy sort of addition on the end of it. Those all need to be renamed. To try and leave my heritage on a positive note, there's a discussion out there on the new wishlist request on Family Historian User Group about the use of UID. This is a unique identifier, which is a long code which should never be repeated. That means some programs can automatically merge individuals from your online and family collaborations with complete confidence. This not only saves a lot of time, but also greatly helps in the fight against duplication. My heritage appear to not only preserve this 36-bit hex code, but also assign it to new entries. More on that in a future video. Ancestry, on the other hand, alter this UID to a 32-bit hex code by dropping off the last four characters and exporting under a different JEDCOM tag. Thankfully, the first 32 bits of the UID are preserved, and that's more than ample to identify unique individuals. I would hope genealogy software vendors get this standardized in the future that it can be of great benefit to everybody. I also intend to do a video on a round trip through Ancestry and back into Family Historian, although at present Family Historian do not appear to make use of this UID to automatically merge exact same people. If you're a Roots Magic user, then this works pretty well, but Roots Magic does not update what is known as the last edit date field. That means it's impossible to sort and review those individuals which have been updated which ultimately leaves duplication and unwanted data in your project. I hope that's been of use to some people. I also find Find My Past quite simple to download media from. Simple download button, and there it is on your computer. Still needs to be really into something meaningful, but at least it's there without all the messing about that you have to do within my heritage. Don't forget to add your comments below the video if you know any tricks that maybe have helped the other people. Once again, thanks for watching.